Hello Angular developers. Today I would like to share the latest updates on Angular from FAD Learning. With a new major version every six months, Angular keeps pushing the boundaries of web application development. So in line with this release cycle, on 29th May 2025, Angular version 20 was released, introducing brand new APIs, enhanced developer experience, improved type checking, as well as stabilization of features from earlier Angular versions. So this video provides an overview of all the Angular 20 updates. So let's dive into the first update, changed naming conventions. Now in Angular version 20, when generating a new component using CLI command ng generate component component name, you will get the same four file structure but with shorter file names. For example, the app.component.html file becomes app.html, the app.component.scss becomes app.scss, app.component.spec.ts becomes app.spec.ts, and app.component.ts becomes app.ts, which means the component prefix is removed from each file name. And the same pattern applies to services and directives. When creating a demo service using the CLI, demo.service.spec.ts becomes demo.spec.ts and demo.service.ts becomes demo.ts. So here, Angular 20 dropped the service part from both the files. Similarly, when creating an auth directives using the CLI, auth.directive.spec.ts becomes auth.spec.ts and auth.directives.ts becomes auth.ts. And here also dropping the directive prefix from both the files. And last, let's talk on pipes. When creating a square pipes using the CLI command, ng generate pipe pipe name, Angular 20 generates two files with a hyphen pipe prefix. So here, square.pipe.spec.ts becomes square-pipe.spec.ts and square.pipe.ts becomes square-pipe.ts. Here, the pipe prefix is not dropped. Instead, the dot is replaced with a hyphen. So in summary, Angular 20 updates naming conventions for components, services, directives, and pipes while keeping the same code structure. Now let's go ahead and explore the updates on template expression syntax in Angular 20. And the first update is the exponential operator. Now it is supported in templates using double asterisk operator. And this update allows you to perform math related expressions directly in template files within double curly braces. For example, two double asterisk three would calculate two to the power of three. Second update is Tag the template literals. Angular 19.2 introduced a template string support in expressions, and Angular 20 builds on that by adding tag the template literals. For example, now you can call a function like uppercase in your template file using string interpolation syntax and pass a string as a template literal, like hello world. Next update is void in event handling. Angular now supports void return types in template expressions, allowing you to ignore return values. For example, adding void before a function call in your template file explicitly ignores its return value, preventing default behavior if needed. And the last update on template is the in operator. It checks if an object has a specific property and conditionally rendered content. If the property exists in an object, the content is displayed. Otherwise, it does not display anything. And we can use the in operator between an object name and its property name. If that property exists in an object, it prints the required content. Otherwise, it doesn't. So these four updates will make Angular templates even more powerful and flexible. Now let's move on and explore the changes to Signal in Angular 20. Signals were introduced in Angular 16 and 17. By Angular 19, Signal input and output API is stabilized. And now in Angular 20, additional Signal APIs such as Effect, 
two signal two observable and linked signal have also stabilized next the http resource and resource api were introduced in angular 19 and it remain experimental in angular 20 furthermore angular 20 introduced new experimental api support for signal based forms promising more reactive and efficient form handling with benefits like unified APIs, better scalability and automatic updates via computed signal. So these are the key signal updates in Angular 20. Next Angular 20 update is Zoneless is now promoted to developer preview. Angular 20 continues to improve upon Zoneless change detection, which was experimentally introduced in Angular 18 and in Angular 20, it has now been moved from experimental support to developer preview. Additionally, it has been renamed from provide experimental zoneless change detection to provide zoneless change detection. So if you use this, you won't need the extra zone.js library, which can improve performance, reduce bundle size, and make Angular applications easier to debug. So what we have to do to go with zoneless? First step is we should upgrade to Angular 20 by using the command ng update. Second, we need to add provide zoneless change detection inside the providers array of the app.config.ts file. And third, we need to uninstall zone.js using the command npm uninstall zone.js. So to use zoneless in Angular, we need to follow these three steps. Next. Let's move on to the updates on server side rendering. Angular 19 introduced incremental hydration and route level rendering to optimize application performance, where incremental hydration is a powerful feature that enables hydrating pages in chunks rather than all at once. And this feature allows adding triggers to add the red defer blocks to defining incremental hydration boundaries. And router level rendering in Angular means you can control how individual routes are rendered, supporting various modes like server side rendering, client side rendering, and static side generation for enhanced performance and flexibility. So, in Angular 20, both incremental hydration and route level rendering are stable, which means they can be used in production. And with Angular 20, advanced server-side rendering features are enabled by default for new projects, leveraging incremental hydration to deliver faster load times, enhanced server-side rendering, and support for various rendering modes for performance optimization. Next update is on HMR, Hot Module Replacement. In Angular 19, the team introduced initial support for CSS and template hot model replacement and Angular 20 further enhances this feature by promoting template HMR to stable status. So with Angular 20, template HMR is now a default feature enabling seamless UI updates in the browser without full page reloads. Next, let's switch to the updates on unit testing. Angular has deprecated Karma and Angular 20 introduced an experimental default test runner. Initially, experimental support was introduced just for node related testing and web test runner for browser related testing. And building on this, Angular is now experimenting with vTest, which enables testing in both node as well as browser environments allowing tests to run seamlessly across both now last let's talk about the actively supported versions in angular 20. angular 20 has specific version requirements for typescript and node.js so to ensure compatibility and optimal performance you will need a typescript version 5.8 or greater than 5.8 also, you need a Node.js version greater than 20.19.0. Therefore, make sure to verify that your development environment meets these requirements to avoid any potential issues or conflicts when working with Angular 20. So that's all for our Angular 20 updates overview. And I hope now you have a good understanding of the changes in Angular 20. 
for in-depth knowledge on each new and stable feature. Check out our Angular 20 new features playlist where I have covered most of the topics in detail. And stay updated with the latest Angular tutorials and videos by subscribing to FAD Learning. Thanks for watching and we will meet again in the next video. Till then, keep visiting, keep learning and keep commenting. Thank you. Bye-bye.